These are our injectors for our rocket Karma, which we're going to be propulsion testing in just about a month. The injector for a rocket is a part that isn't so often talked about, although it may be one of the most important parts of the rocket altogether. In fact, they're so important that these parts of the rocket were often classified as top secret back in the 50s and 60s when the Americans and the Russians were fighting to get to space. So what is it that's so special about these injectors? How exactly do we go ahead making this? And how does it work in the end? Before we can talk about how we designed and built our injector, we first need to understand what an injector is. This is Houston. You are confirmed to go for orbit. The role of the injector is really quite simple. We simply have to get the fluid or the propellant from the tank into the combustion chamber. Obviously, the simplest way to do this is just to drill a big hole. You know why you're digging holes? Because it's good for you. And let all of that propellant into the combustion chamber. But the problem with that is, if you have this big glob of propellant that's just going into the combustion chamber and it's not really mixing with the fuel properly, you don't really get a very efficient burn. And you actually sacrifice a lot of specific impulse and a lot of combustion efficiency in this process. So instead of just simply injecting propellant into the combustion chamber, the injector also has to atomize the propellant that's going into the combustion chamber. Okay. Basically, we have to break apart all of those liquid globules into the smallest pieces that we possibly can so they have the best opportunity to mix with the fuel inside of the combustion chamber. One way to do this is simply to drill a bunch of little tiny holes into your injector plate and the process of making them really small allows the repellent to atomize as they come out the other end. This style of injector is called a shower head injector and if you've ever taken a shower, you kind of know how this works. By just making the holes the liquid has to travel through really, really small, you are setting a limit to how big the drops can be as they go into the combustion chamber. With this style of injector, the smaller the better. But there are other ways that you can atomize the flow of the liquid into the combustion chamber if you're feeling a little bit ambitious. And one of these ways is to build what's called an impinging injector. And that's basically what we have here. In this case, instead of having a bunch of holes that basically run parallel through the injector plate and act just like a shower head, you actually have impinging flow. The holes are drilled at an angle to each other, and this will cause the flows to actually crash into each other somewhere behind the injection plate. This is actually really good at atomizing the flow because of that momentum that occurs when those two flows crash into each other. It really breaks apart those molecules. So, if you have the machining capacity, sometimes building an impinging injector is a really good idea. But how did we actually go about building these injectors? Gordy, there was an upward fluctuation in pressure in the manifold when we fired that. The first part to the injector was machining these holes around the outside. These are going to be what interfaces the injector to the upper bulkhead of the combustion chamber. Nice. All we had to do was start with a steel plate that was water cut into the exact dimension that we needed, which is 244 millimeters. And then we could go about machining some holes into our injector. But in order to machine these holes in a way that they're useful, they have to be very precise. In order to combat this, we decided to 3D print a template which would tell us exactly where to drill. It's basically just a plate which has a bunch of little holes in it. All of these little holes would just tell us where to use a center punch and actually put a little hole into the injector plate where we wanted the big holes to go. Then it was just a matter of using the drill press in order to follow the guide that was given by all of our center punches. So this is the innards of the drill press that we're using. And here you can see that it's being speed controlled by gears. So a bit of an old school method. All we have to do is adjust these uh, belts on the gears and we can basically adjust the speed. And we also have a chart here that tells us which settings correspond to which speeds. And also a handy chart that tells us how fast to spin uh, the drill for different types of uh, materials and different sizes of our drill. So let's get to changing that those belts. Five degrees, 750, 
coming down to 23. The next part of our build of our injector is interfacing the funnel, which is actually going to help divert the flow from the tank to the injector. We're going to be casting the funnel for the injector. We want to do some testing with it. So this is going to be what connects our pressure washer to the injector plate. And essentially we can get a really good test of how the injector behaves by just shooting a bunch of high pressure water through it. In order to make this funnel, of course, we can't just use this 3D printed part because it probably won't survive the pressure of the pressure washer. In order to accommodate this, we're going to actually cast this out of aluminum. So we're gonna do this casting much the same way as we have in the past. We got our trusty casting sand here and we're basically just going to pack it into this mold and then, yeah, we should see how it goes. If you'd like to know more about this process, be sure to check out our video that we did about casting a nose cone. There we go over the full process of how to prepare the mold and actually pour your aluminum. In the end, our funnel looked a lot like this. Half down, half down. Nine forward. The final aspect of the injector plate are just these little tiny holes that we had to drill. These can be a little bit of a challenge depending on what kind of drill you're working with. Because we're drilling through steel, steel is a pretty hard material. So there is a chance that you could get a drill bit stuck into the steel as you drill it. So you have to be a little bit careful and move slowly so that you don't have this happen. And make sure you're using lots of drilling oil because without it, you're definitely running a high risk of either getting the drill bit stuck or potentially breaking the drill bit. For the impinging injector, we had to get a little more creative in order to figure out how we're actually going to drill holes that converge on each other, considering we only had a drill press that could just drill straight downwards. Our solution to this was just to use a bolt and drill holes into the bolt, which would be at an angle, and essentially screw that bolt into the injector plate itself. And here you see how we've done this. We have six bolts which have been screwed into our injector plate. They're just M10 bolts and we basically made M10 holes and threaded them to allow this to happen. The real trick to this technique was figuring out how to get angled holes built into those bolts. For this, we 3D printed a template which would hold our bolt at an angle. Then when we used the drill press to drill straight downwards, it would have the effect of creating an angled hole through the bolt. Clever girl. This was working great for the first little bit until we realized a fatal problem. <laughs> So you can see here that now we have actually melted the plastic onto the thread of the bolt. I'm melting, melting. We have actually drilled through the bolt finally on that second hole, but in the removal process from the mount, it's clearly not working. When you're drilling into a bolt that's really small, it tends to get really hot really fast. This is usually no problem. The bolt is totally able to handle the higher temperature, but if it's sitting in a plastic mold, well, the plastic kind of starts to melt. So unfortunately, we ended up kind of deforming our drilling mold in the process of making this part. And that kind of hampered our ability to get really good precision while drilling these holes. At this point, we were really excited to test out how these injectors were performing. So we took them out to my balcony, hooked up the pressure washer, and did some testing. Okay, engine stop. APA at a decent. And here you see our setup. We have our tank, which is just a PVC pipe, which has a plug on the end and a little hole. And that goes through our weird connector system here because we couldn't get the right adapters for the garden hoses, but uh, we've kind of made it work. It's a little bit leaky, but it works for now. And that gets all connected to the input of the pressure washer. That is actually a nice one and working quite well. And then on the high pressure end, we have our main column here. We have a pressure relief valve that's right here. And that is in case the pressure goes higher than 20 bar, which is not happening right now, but just in case. And then finally, we do have a pressure gauge. It is kind of facing the wrong way, but uh, we're trying to make it work. <laughs> and then this is where we connect the uh, funnel to is right here. And that's how we get our injector tested. It's like you're steering.
As you can see, our first test with the shower head injector was a little bit anticlimactic. We realized almost immediately that the flow rate of our pressure washer is a little bit less than the flow rate that we're expecting for the propulsion test. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. We actually want a flow rate of 50 liters per minute of nitrous oxide going into the combustion chamber, but our pressure washer is only capable of delivering about five liters per minute of water. So that's about a tenth of what we actually need. And as you can see, it results in a bit of an underwhelming performance. So for the next test with our impinging injector, we decided just to put in one of these impinging injectors and blank out the other four spots. This way, we're getting a little bit closer to the flow rate that we should be expecting through each of these injector holes. Three, two, one, go. Hey, that's the Unfortunately, after this test, we realized that those impinging injector holes weren't exactly impinging and we're kind of creating a lot of weird chaotic behavior. And the reason for this is quite simple. We just didn't really do a good job of drilling those holes. And a lot of that was because of the actual drilling mold that we used to hold the bolt. After all, it was melting while we were drilling it, so it was kind of moving all over the place. In order to step up our game with the bolt holding template, we decided to actually go one step further than 3D printing. We decided to use the casting furnace. So here we have the result of the cast that we made in order to make this bolt holder a reality. And this thing actually works quite simply. We have first the template that gets bolted to the plate while we're doing the drilling. And then we have this uh, square piece which gets fitted right up here. And as you can see, the bolt is fitted just inside of that square piece. And then all you really have to do is just switch out the piece, put it in a different orientation, and do another hole, and switch that out again, and do another hole. And the idea of this is that if you don't move the clamp that's holding the main piece of the holder, you'll be drilling in exactly a concentric circle. And this should result in a perfect impingement in an ideal world. This is how these work. You stick the seal on, like that. And kind of just rotate it on there. So in theory, that should give us a good seal between. Uh, I don't know. Should give us a good seal between the bolt and the plate, so that it doesn't leak. And you can see. Exit there. And that's how we make our injector. That times four, or six actually in the end. We still have two more holes to do. Two bolts installed. We have just made a fatal mistake. As you can see here, we have actually got our tap stuck in our plate. So <laughs> I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. We are going to have to kind of improvise a way around this. What happened is basically the die that we're using actually broke, but we were literally almost there. You can see that our, our tap is almost through the plate. So uh, it really kind of sucks that it broke right there. So we actually were able to get that thread cutting tool out. We just had to use a pipe wrench, a pipe wrench, in order to actually get it out. Uh, <laughs> it took a little bit of effort, but in the end, uh, the day has been saved. Now, after such an upgrade, it would be a real shame if we didn't test to see if this was actually working a bit better. And that's exactly what we did the next week. We copy it down, Eagle. This time we're a bit more confident that we're going to get behavior that we're expecting. It's quite clear here that we were able to achieve an impingement with this type of injector. It's not a perfect impingement. There are definitely some flows that impinged a little bit later than the point that we wanted them to. But overall, it was a pretty successful test. So we're planning to move forward with this technique in order to drill all of the impinging injectors that we're going to make in the future. And of course, this is the final result of that impinging technique. 
You can see here that we have six bolts, each with four holes, which allow us to achieve the impinging behavior that we want. But of course, we won't really know if this was working until the pressure test, which is coming up in just one month. And we'll be putting both of these injectors to the test to see which one gives us the best performance. So be sure to stay tuned to see which injector will work best in our propulsion test campaign. To stay up to date with our propulsion activities and our upcoming testing campaign, be sure to give a like and subscribe. And remember to expand your horizons.